A wonderful Catholic couple whose names I'll keep anonymous, not that long ago, lost a child before he was born. The child had been diagnosed with some serious developmental problems while in the womb, but because his husband and wife had several other children, the entire family had to prepare for the worse. They knew that the child that the mom was carrying would probably not live more than a few days. They had already named the boy Andre. The day before Andre was supposed to be born, it was discovered that his heart stopped beating. He died without ever seeing life outside of the womb. But in her email that she sent to notify many of us of the child's death, this very faithful and courageous mother ended her email by saying, Saint Andre, pray for us. A simple prayer request presents to us two huge truths that can be seen both in our first reading and in our gospel. As sad as the death of a child is, especially a child who never made it, so to speak, a child who was stillborn or one who miscarried, one of the consolations that God gives to the family, especially to the mother, is that one of her own, one of their own, is now in heaven. Now think about that for a second. Where else would they be? Now most parents who have lost children to miscarriage do not usually think of calling their children saints. Some do not even name such children. That's a mistake. They're still your children. You should have a name. But another mistake is to not to refer to them with what they truly are. They're saints. Only saints get to go to heaven, some after a long life, some quite early. In our first reading from the prophet Isaiah, we hear God tell us, I have called you by your name. Now at first, it may seem that God calls us by our name early in life for some people, later in life for others. But here are two things to consider. First, why does God call us by name? Because we belong to him. This is a very Jewish way of thinking, but it's a beautiful way of seeing things. Anyone that you call by name is yours in some way. Children, husband, wife, friends, you call them by name because they are your children, your spouse, your friends. God calls us by name because we are his. But secondly, when does he call us by name? When we've lived a crazy, sinful life and it's time to turn things around? When someone's supposed to become a, a priest or a sister, a nun, a deacon, does he call us then? Well, yes, he does at those times and those things do happen. But God called you, every single one of you, by name when he made you. Every single one of us has already been in the presence of God. And no, I'm not talking about the wonderful, awesome presence, the real presence of God to the Eucharist, where we see Jesus there in Holy Communion. That's wonderful and that's remarkable. But here's the thing to keep in mind. Our Lord Jesus, he said more things that changed human history than anybody who's ever lived. And he says a very earth-changing statement today. We pay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But to God, what belongs to God? Now the Pharisees were trying to trap our Lord Jesus to get him into trouble by asking him if the taxes to the Romans should be paid or not. See, depending on how he answered, the Lord would be in trouble either with the Jews, who wanted to be free of the Romans, or in trouble with the Romans, who were in charge of everything back then. But our Lord answers brilliantly. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but give to God what belongs to God. So give to Caesar. In other words, give to the government, give to the state what belongs to the state. Okay, what belongs to the state? What belongs to the government? Different ways you can look at this, but the government has the right to tax us so that the common good can be given in all forms to different benefits. Now, do they have the right to tax us to death? Well, probably not, but that's another homily, okay? But there's something that's pretty much everybody has forgotten, especially politicians. They've forgotten this. Everything good comes from God. What the government can provide if they're doing their job properly is a good, the common good for us all. 
that being the case, in the end, nothing belongs to the government. All they have is just on loan, because everything good comes from God. Now, it doesn't mean you stop paying your taxes, man, okay? Be, be a good citizen, okay? But any good that any government can give to its people ultimately comes from our Father in heaven. That's where all goodness comes from. Okay, what about the second part of our Lord's statement? Give to God what belongs to God. Well, the coin that Jesus showed the people had the image of Caesar on it, his inscription. All of us have been imprinted with the image of God. We are all made in his image and likeness. His fingerprints are all over us. Thus, we belong to him. And as I mentioned earlier, this is a very Jewish way of thinking. However, whenever you name someone, you own that person. That person belongs to you. Jesus has just told us in our gospel today that we belong to God. And we just saw what Isaiah said. We belong to God because he named us. Okay then, once again, when did he name us? When we were in the womb. And that's when we were in the presence of God the Father. That's quite the statement. How do I know this? Many of you might remember the story I told you of a priest, and I should probably be preaching this at least once a year. This is amazing stuff here, okay? But a great priest who taught us in seminary was a name Father Robert Zilla. Wonderful man. Well, Father Zilla was at his nephew's house on Christmas break in Minnesota. And there in his nephew, he had a two-year-old son, so two-year-old boy, and a brand new, week-old baby daughter. Now, in that house, they set up an intercom system so that the parents could hear the baby in the bedroom. Well, the baby was asleep, and the family, the rest of the family was in the kitchen. But the little brother sneaked out of the kitchen to go to the bedroom. And Father Zilla quietly crept up behind him to see what he would do. The little boy went to his sleeping baby sister. Keep in mind, he's two years old. That girl was a week old. He climbs to the side of the crib, leans over, and asks her, Can you tell me what God looks like? I forgot. I forgot. Why would a two-year-old boy ask that to a week-old sister? We have to ask a critical question, knowing because nothing's a coincidence. Why do you say that? Because he knew that it was quickly being forgotten. How quickly did we forget? He once saw God. God once saw him. He was once in the presence of God. Well, so too were we. St. Augustine, when he finally converted and realized he'd been living his entire life for himself and not for God, he said these words. You, Lord, were within me. Yet I was looking for you outside of myself. You were with me, but I was not with you. It's time to be with our Lord. So many of us have spent way too much time away from him, all the, wonder, all the time just wondering why our hearts ached while our spirits groaned every time we passed a church, every time we saw something beautiful. Why does your heart long for something more? Because you once saw God. God called you by your name. You are his. You bear his image. So it's time to start living as if you truly and totally belong to the one who made you. There are people waiting for you in heaven. Hope you know that. The major saints, Mary, Joseph, and so forth, but the unknown saints, like little Andre. We've got to do whatever it takes to make it back home. We've got to see our loved ones again, but most importantly, we have to remember something. We forgot what God looks like. No more. Let us remember. Start looking at his face now. Sure, his face is found in the faces of you all, but most especially the face of God is found in the face of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go to him. Go to that face. And if you keep going, Jesus will lead you. You'll make it. You'll be back in the presence of the God who once called you by name.